4.55 gigahertz, 1.4 volts, 85 degrees centigrade. Hello Scatterventures and welcome to a brand new video. In this video we'll overclock the AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT all the way to 4.55 gigahertz using custom loop water cooling. The Ryzen 9 3900 XT is the top dog in the new Matisse XT processor lineup. Matisse XT is the refresh of the original Matisse architecture launched last year. The new processors have the same architecture and the same 7 nanometer process node as its predecessors. AMD claims it has made significant progress on yields and that's why faster products can come to market. The Ryzen 9 3900 XT offers 12 cores and 24 threads with a base frequency of 3.8 GHz and boost frequency of 4.7 GHz. The TDP is 105 Watt and the MSRP is just below $500. The CPUs should be available from July 7th. In this video, we will cover the basic overclocking steps needed to get your CPU all the way to 4.55 GHz using custom loop water cooling. We will look into three overclocking scenarios. First, we will overclock the CPU to its maximum Prime95 stable setting. Second, we will push the CPU to its all core maximum frequency. Lastly, we'll also look into individual CCX overclocking. However, before we get started, we'll have to talk about the overclocking constraints and our platform. Along with the AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT processor, in this guide we will be using the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Impact motherboard, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Triton Z Royal DDR4 3200 memory, and of course EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be about $3,200. That's $500 for the CPU, the cooling $600, motherboard $430, bench table $200, memory $160, and the graphics card $1,300. Before we start with overclocking, let's talk about the constraints we will be facing. A Ryzen 3000 CPU consists of a couple of parts. Each CPU has multiple chiplets. A chiplet is a die with specific functions such as CPU cores, I.O. hub, memory controller, and so on. All the chiplets communicate with each other through the Infinity Fabric interconnect. A core chiplet die, or CCD, is one of the chips on the AMD CPU. A CCD consists of two CCXs paired together. CCX is short for core complex. The core complex consists of four individual cores, each with their L1 and L2 cache. They also share a larger L3 cache. The Ryzen 9 3900 XT has two CCDs with each two CCXs. Each CCX has one out of the four cores disabled. Adding up all the cores that are left, three times four makes 12 cores. AMD's default configuration offers aggressive clock frequency of individual cores based on the temperature and power consumption headroom as well as the individual core quality. While AMD offers aggressive frequency boost for single thread application, it does not offer to set the single threaded boost frequency when manually overclocking. This means that if you overclock manually, you will lose the single thread frequency advantage. Also, AMD does not offer an AVX offset that can reduce the operating frequency when, for example, running Prime95. Lastly, by default, the fabric, memory controller and memory frequency operate in synchronous mode. That means, typically, the CPU will run all frequencies in 1 to 1 ratio. Synchronous mode works up to 1.8 GHz, after which the system switches to asynchronous mode. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory. The fabric clock will also run below system memory frequency. So you will have a performance penalty. The penalty can be overcome by increasing the memory frequency to well over DDR4 4000 speeds. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and the overclocking. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. SuperPi 4M. Geekbench 5, HWOD X265, Cinebench R20, ROG Realbench version 2.56, and Final Fantasy 14. 
Before we get started with pushing the performance of the AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT processor, let's first take a look at the scoring at stock settings. Super Pi 4M, 44.485 seconds. Geekbench 5 Single, 1306 points. Geekbench 5 Multi, 10866 points. HWL X265 4K, 20.513 frames per second. Cinebench R20, 7200 marks. ROG Realbench, 210,790 points. Final Fantasy XIV, 149.47 frames per second. As a first step, we will overclock the CPU frequency to 4.35 GHz with 1.365 volt and a level 2 load line. We leave any of the other settings untouched. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. We can already see that by manually overclocking, we are giving up the strong single thread boost frequency. In some single threaded benchmarks, we lose performance compared to default operation, while in the multi threaded applications, we gain performance. Let's dial in some of the other frequencies. In addition to overclocking the CPU frequency to 4.35 GHz, we also overclocked the fabric and memory controller to 1.8 GHz. We also manually increased the memory frequency to DDR4-3600 and set the memory timings. This is also the highest Prime95 small FFT with AVX stable configuration. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation we can clearly see the positive impact of increasing the fabric and memory frequency. Some single-threaded benchmark applications are still in deficit compared to stock, but especially multi-threaded applications are benefiting a lot. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 4.35 GHz, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 85 degrees centigrade and a peak CPU package power of 220 watts. Let's have a look at the post Prime95 overclocking capabilities. If we ignore Prime95, we can further increase the CPU frequency to 4.55 GHz while maintaining the same fabric and memory clock frequencies. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. As expected, the performance continues to rise. Interesting to note is that at 4.55 GHz, in single threaded applications like Super Pi 4M and Geekbench 5, we're actually faster than default operation. While in default operation, the boost frequency is 4.7 GHz for single thread applications. And that's a little bit confusing, right? Well, not really, because that 4.7 GHz is a best case scenario. And for the best case scenario to happen, you need great cooling, but also great cores. Not all 12 cores of the 3900 XT are of equal quality. So while some may boost to 4.7 GHz, others may only boost to 4.5 GHz. And on average, it appears that our 4.55 GHz on all cores is faster than some on 4.7 and some on 4.5. If you want to find out which cores boost to what frequency, I highly recommend you to use Hardware Info's Effective Clock Measurement. You can learn more about this measurement from the Elmore Labs blog article. So, in short, the likely reason why we see higher performance at 4.55 GHz compared to default operation is 1. Better frequency on the fabric and the memory, as well as 2. All cores running at near turbo frequencies. The last step in our overclocking adventure is to increase the frequency of the individual CCX. For this Ryzen 9 3900 XT, we found that CCX2 on CCD1 was able to run at half a ratio higher than the others, so 4.6 GHz. We ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. The performance increase ranges from 2.5% all the way up to 16.54%. Alright, let's wrap this up. When going through the numbers and discussing them with some of my industry friends, I realized that rather than having several overclocking strategies, AMD users have a set of overclocking trade-offs, but not in a bad way. Frankly, the out-of-box frequencies and resulting performance are excellent. The AMD engineers who were tasked with getting users the best possible performance at default settings did an amazing job. In fact, 
they did such a good job that manual overclocking can give you worse performance in certain scenarios, specifically single threaded light workloads. When manually overclocking, you lose the benefits of automatic boost frequency. Also, you can't configure the boost frequencies by specific use case, for example, by core usage or per core. This is the first overclocking trade-off. Settle for lower single threaded performance with higher all core performance or the other way around. Another overclocking trade-off is that there's no way to configure the system for truly worst case scenarios, such as Prime95 small FFT with AVX. On other platforms, you can use an AVX offset ratio to temporarily reduce the performance if such workloads come your way. But on AMD, you can't. That means you have to decide whether you're willing to trade in a potentially less stable system for additional performance in certain situations. Side note on this is that benchmarks like Geekbench 5, ROG Realbench, Cinebench R20 are actually using AVX instructions. So calling for an AVX offset ratio is not entirely correct. In fact, using an AVX offset ratio would result in lower performance in those benchmarks as well. In an ideal scenario, here's how the Ryzen 9 3900 XT would likely be able to overclock to. For single threaded workloads, 4.8 GHz, all core non AVX workloads, 4.55 GHz, all core AVX heavy workloads, 4.35 GHz. As for now, if you stick to an absolute worst case scenario, you'll have to settle for 450 MHz lower in single threaded workloads. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you learned something new or you liked the video, you know what to do. Till the next time.